Hi y'all, this is Maria Clark at Sweet Willow Designs and welcome to my studio. This is a Christmas in July project. Unfortunately, the only one I'm going to get done in July this year. However, I do have some things planned for um, as we move closer to Christmas so we can do some fun projects together. In this particular project, I am going to make this ornament and this ornament is about, oh, it's, it's over two and a half inches. Um, and then I'm going to do some sweet little magnets that you can put on the fridge. Now, if you can't find these magnets, uh, don't forget, you can always use a little wood cutout and a magnet, you know, attach a magnet to the back or something like that, and that would work just great. So let's go ahead and get started with this project. So the colors that I'm using are True Red, a multi-surface called Coffee Bean, the Hauser Medium Green, White, and Gold. Now, you can use any type of paint you want. I prefer the Deco Art Americana. The consistency is really perfect for me. And you basically need a red, green, brown, white, and gold uh, for these particular projects. I'm also going to be using the DecoArt DuraClear in satin to give it a nice finish at the end. I'm going to be using these little wood ornament cutouts. I'm going to be using some pencil eraser tips. I have a regular eraser one and then this, this other one is a little fatter. The, uh, the other one is the PaperMate, uh, it's a PaperMate uh, eraser. So just use the ones that you have. Most of the erasers I use, I get from the Dollar Tree, um, but this, this other little uh, paper mate is a little bit fatter, so just look for what you, um, you can find. I'm also going to be using these magnets that I got at the Dollar Tree, and these came in several different colors and two different sizes, a smaller one, and then this one is just over one and a half inches. Um, and so I used those, and it came in blue, green, black, and I think there might've been like a red or a pink. At any rate, if you can't find those, don't forget you could use this a wood cutout. Now, before we get started actually doing the uh, ornaments and the magnets, I'm going to do a little bit of practice session with you because we're going to be doing a poinsettia design, which I love, of course. And um, I thought it would be fun to just practice a little bit. I'm just using a heavyweight cardstock and my tools, and I'm using the red paint. And a poinsettia has uh, five leaves on it um, or five um, petals. Um, and we're going to just make some little marks for ourselves if that's helpful as we practice. Um, when I paint, I don't actually make those marks, but practicing is really helpful. So I'm going to go ahead and put the five petals down with the regular tipped eraser. Um, and then I'm just going to put three little dots in the center uh, for the stamen of the, um, of the poinsettia. And that gives us our sweet little poinsettias. Now I'm going to use the coffee bean and the larger, thicker paper made eraser. You don't have to use this. You could actually use one of your dotting tools to put this down, but I'm going to make some little pine cones. At least I hope they look like pine cones. Let me know if you think they look like pine cones. I thought they were kind of cute. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put several dots down. And then I'll show you using uh, my dotting tool that we're gonna do some swishes and swipes to get the pine cone look. So I've got actually a fairly fine one of my daughters. I'm going to pick up a little bit of white. You don't want a whole lot, but you can pick up some white. And I'm just, see how I'm just swishing that up and then go to the sides and then just build up by swishing that pine cone. Um, I make the first two and then I go a little wider and then I bring that in a little bit. And so we'll practice a few of those so you can get the hang of doing the pine cone. Swish up. Swish on the side, swish on the side. And I'm doing it over the brown because as I swish, it starts to pick up some of the brown and you get a little bit of a variegated look. So you get some little highlighting and shadows. And if you want to, you can go back in with a little bit more brown paint to make those a little bit darker brown. You can see it really well here, how it picks up a little bit of that brown. And we'll practice another one. You just want a little bit of white on that tip. Okay, there are my pine cones. Here's one that's just all brown, so you can see what it would look like if you just use the brown paint. I think there's not enough definition, but you know what you could do is use brown and then sort of like a tan. Um, and that would be good. That would make a nice looking pine cone. And I'll just put a little bit of white on it. I 
Okay, we have some stylized pine cones. Now I'm going to make some little acorns. And again, just drop some paint on the canvas. And then I'm using the tip of the uh, smaller, or the, the more pointy eraser to just put a little cap on the pine cone, or on the acorn rather. Put a little stem. And then I'll just use my tool to move that paint around to get a nice shape. And put a little bit of brown into that white. Again, you could use different colors. You could use a tan color. That would be really sweet. So let's try that again. I always like to practice just a little bit. That's why I always keep this card handy. This is a heavyweight cardstock that I just get at like Michael's or Hobby Lobby, and I cut it into four quarters. It's eight and a half by eleven. I cut it into the into four um, four smaller sheets, and I just keep these by my table because they're really nice to practice on. If you want to try out a new pattern or something like that, they're really sweet to to use to practice on. I like that. All right, now I'm going to make some branches and I'm going to make myself a little tool. So I just have some, um, this is painter's tape. You could use a masking tape. And I'm going to fold it to create a flat edge. And I'm going to fold it a couple of times here so I get a little bit of thickness. I don't want them very thick. You could try using a, a thin credit card or um, you know key card or something like that. But I'm just making my own and it's a very thin, fine, Going to give me a fine line and I'm going to use it to make some branches. Now you don't have to do this of course you could um, you could just dot branches and I think that looks really good. So I just picked up some paint and um, it actually works better. I tried it in the well of my palette but it actually works better on a flat surface so I'm just using a, a foam plate and then I'll just kind of drag my tool, my handmade tool through the paint and um, then I'll be able to make my, my branches. So let's get in a little closer so you can see that. I'll just drag it a little bit and then just make some branches. And then I can cut, you know, make one of these and then I can cut it down a little bit to make some smaller branches if I wanted to do that. But that gives me a really nice branch effect. So I really kind of like the way that looks. Um, the other thing I wanted to see here, I am just gonna, I'm just gonna cut a smaller piece off and just use that smaller piece then to do the same thing and it just give me a smaller branch so I can get a little bit more detail if I want. The other thing I wanted to show you is that sort of red and white poinsettia. That's just swirling my paint mix together, not mixing them, but kind of swirling them and that's a nice effect. Now I'm just doing a little bit of a pine bow with that um, small piece of tape, my tool there that I've made, and I'm just uh, making a pine bow. In the end, I'm going to actually swish uh, the pine bow, I think. So here's my, uh, my uh, ornament. This is a wood cutout, and I put several coats of the black um, chalkboard paint on it. And then I'm using one of my stencils, and I'm going to draw myself a grid. So just line this up. This is really easy. Just line it up. Line it up to the center. There's some holes at the top of that um, little cap to the ornament and just get it lined up, and then I'll just draw the grids. I don't need the circles, but I do want the center, and I do want some of those grid marks to help me with my orientation of my painting. And then I'm going to actually divide this in thirds because I'm going to use sort of that um, format on my, on my design. Now I am going to paint uh, a, a row of dots all the way around the perimeter. I'm going in slightly from the edge of the ornament and I'm just using the marks from my stencil from my grid that I put down and I'm following that. I'm using my G6 four millimeter and the true red and then I'll just go in and put dots in between and see how perfect that is. I just, I like a good perfect row. And then I'm using my tool to put in some branches on the, the marks for where I, that I put for when I divided the circle into thirds. And I'm just going to draw in some branches. You don't have to be overly precise with that. I'm just trying to get my orientation straight here. Go to my smaller tool and I'll just put in some additional branching. Just however much you think. You don't want a whole lot. 
um, but we're going to go in and we're going to fill that in with some pine bows and some and then our poinsettias and our pine cones. There we go. Now I'm going to use the green and a small nail dotter and I'm going to fill in the pine bows. Now you could use your small tool as we did in our practice session. Um, I decided to try this and I thought, it I thought it worked out pretty well. I'm just swishing down to make some pine boughs at the sort of around the tips of these branches that I've put on. You can see I'm just swiping um, one in the center and then a few down the side. And I'll do that on each one of those little sections of branches. You could put as much as you want, but you want to kind of stay towards the outside rim because we're going to go in and do some work on the center. Okay, that's looking good. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to put in my poinsettias. And one thing I wanted to mention about this, don't be worried if you don't get you some precision here on your poinsettias, because if you look at a poinsettia, it's not perfect. It's got, you know, um, its leaves go out in different directions. And so you basically are just trying to get five dots down. And you'll notice that mine um, are not, you know, always perfect on the center. You want them fairly close. You don't want a whole big gap in the center. But I've got three that I put down. And now I'm going to go in and I'm going to start to put my pine cones in. Using that fat, it's a Papermate Arrowhead eraser. It's a little bit bigger. But again, you could use a dotting tool. And I'm just going to put three pine cones. Just going to place them where I think, you know, sort of angling them a little bit. One thing I want you to know, I'm overlapping over some of the pine bows. Um, and that's okay. You can let your paint dry. Uh, mine is fairly dry. It's not completely dry, but it's fairly dry. And then I'll just go in like we practiced and start building my pine cones. And I want pieces and parts of this to overlap so it looks a little bit more, you know, realistic. Okay, so that's one section, and just decide where you want the rest of them to go. I'm adding a little bit more brown because I thought there was just a little too much white, and I wanted to have a little bit more contrast. So now move to the other sides, and I'll just do the same thing. Just place three pine cones somewhere in those third sections. Just kind of angle your pine cones around your poinsettias. A little more brown just to highlight. One thing I wanted to mention is I left the cap on this black. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of gold. I think I might, the next time I do, I might paint that cap gold. So consider if you want to do anything to the cap. Now I've just dropped three little drops of green in the center. You could use any color you wanted. Just want a little bit of contrast. Now I'm just going to start to add a few more little pine bows, little sprigs of pine. This is an optional step. You know, you don't have to do this step. But I'm just going to add, I'm filling in space. I'm going to add a little bit more. See how I'm going over some of the previously painted sections? That's OK, because I want it to be a little bit realistic, and I want to give it a little depth. So I just added some additional pine bows. Now I'm going to mix a little bit of white 
And I'm not gonna mix it, I'm just gonna swirl it because I want a little variegated look here. And I'm using the end of my, uh, my crochet hook. Now, don't forget, you actually have some options with these tools. You've got the flat end, but you also have the round end, which actually dots and walks the dots really nicely. And so I'm just using those to place a little bit of what would be a little ornaments, something like that. And they've, they've got that nice little variegated uh, red and white look to them. And just place them where you think you're filling up a little bit of space where you think they might look nice. All right, now I'm using some gold paint and I'm just dotting in between the top and the bottom of the first row of red dots that I put down. I think that looks really pretty to add that gold, a little touch of gold. That's why I wondered if I shouldn't have, you know, painted the cap gold next time. Oh, and you could still paint it now if you wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and leave it black and see how I like that because I'm going to put a gold ribbon on it. All right, we just get that all around. All right, so now we're just dotting. We're just adding. I add a little bit of gold element here, just kind of dotting. And I'm going to add a little bit of white for snow. You know, put three dots together, space them out. Whatever pleases you. I don't want to over dot. I don't want to put too much. I want a little bit of contrast and space there. But I'm going to add some snow, and I'm going to dot over some of the pine bows and the branches to give a little bit of snow on those surfaces. Paint there is dry, of course. And I'm done with that piece. Now I'm going to work on these magnets. These are the little uh, Dollar Tree magnets, and they're just little plastic uh, magnets. So I'm making some pine bows, again, in that kind of three section. I'm not putting any grid marks or anything down. This has a little ring. It's not always perfect, but it, it's a good guide. So just in threes, you of course could do this however you wanted. Leave some section in the middle because I'm going to put a poinsettia there. I just swirled up some of that paint. Just get a little different color. Add my center, and then I'll add a little bit of dotting on the outside of that using gold. A little white for the snow. Isn't that sweet? I'm adding a little bit of green. I put gold in the center and I decided to add green. Now I'm going to make three pine cones on this magnet. So I'm going to have a little set. Now I'm going in with my G6 four millimeter and I'm just adding some little bobbles here and there. Go in with the small end and just add a few more little dots. Add a little one in the middle. And then I'm going to add a little, just some little green dots, the edge.
Oh, came off easily. A little mistake there that just wiped off easily. All right. Now the third one I'm going to be using the making some acorns. I'm just going to put some acorns down. Just adjust the cap a little bit. Put my stems. I'm trying to decide what to do here. <laughs> I didn't have a plan for this one. I'm just going to make some little ribbons with the dotting. I'm going to add a little bit more brown to those uh, acorn caps. Now I'm just going to fill in with some dots. Yeah, that, that didn't work for me, so let's take that off. Now I'm just putting in some bobbles. Sometimes I go right over the previous dotting. Now I'm going to put a little border on the edge just to see, and I'm following the line uh, that is there. You know, you can see kind of the circle of the magnet behind the clearish, transparent acrylic. And I'm just going around. Again, I'm using the opposite end of my, uh, of my crochet hook. It's a nice way to get some different size dots and just making a little bit of a frame. All right, and here's the set. Now, I think the magnets would make a really sweet hostess gift. Um, or something even for your own refrigerator. But isn't that, wouldn't that be nice as a little hostess gift? I think that would just be so appreciated. So these are my Christmas in July projects. I hope you'd enjoy them. Um, let me know in the comments below what you think. Here it is. I've put uh, a couple of coats of the DuraClear satin on them, signed the back. And that's also a really, a really nice gift. I love this project. Thanks so much for joining me in my studio. Take care.